Hello, welcome to the introduction to Robot C graphical interface. Um, for the most part, this is the older version of how to code a VEX IQ robot. Now, we're using the graphical interface because while some students may understand text coding, uh, basically it's C coding, this for the most part is much easier. Uh, right now we're looking at some of the the base startup window. When you open it up, this is what you see. So before I start anything, I have to open a new file. Now, once I open a new file, there's some basic things we need to be aware of. First off, we need to know what platform we're coding to because this will do multiple platforms. We also need to know what ports and what, well, what ports our motors are plugged into and what ports our sensors are plugged into. So let's stop and take a few moments and take a look at this. So if I go to the robot right here, we're going to specify the platform type right now. It's a VEX IQ. We can also do other VEX types, which is the Cortex in this one. You can also do the um, revs and stuff in the other versions. But when I go to motor and sensor setup right here, it's going to pop up this window. Now let's start with the easy one. Let's start with the standards. This is one of the standard models that you can make. Now, for the most part, for beginning students, you probably ought to start with one of these and then start modifying it. Um, just because you can start with this platform and work your way out. What you can see in this image of the robot is the basic clawbot. The clawbot has uh, VEX IQ motors here and here. You can see there's actually two more hiding there, and then there's one opposite. You can find the robot, the robot brain right here, and you cannot see its radio card, but you can do, can see the battery. You can see a touch LED sensor here. You can see a color ID sensor here. This is actually a bump sensor you can kind of see right here. And that's basically all the sensors that are on this, except for depending on how they build it, if it has the gyro hidden back here in the middle of the bot, like straight down from basically where that bar is right there, straight down inside the middle here. Um, that's what's on this. So if I'm looking at this, that's where I'm working at. Now, I have to identify the motors by names, and all VEX IQ motors have built-in encoders. What that means is they can count revolutions with them. There's enough, they're a smart motor. So they can count revolutions. They can also actuate as a servo, and that means they'll move at specific angles. So as you're looking at this, that's one way to start. Now, I've, I'm just going to pick Clob out right now for this one. You can pick others as you get going. The other thing you can do is you can look at where things are mounted. There's only 12 ports on the robot brain. There are motor ports and there are sensor ports. And the only reason that knows it's a motor port is you've told it it's a motor port here under motors. And one of them is reversed so that you're, when you push both of the sticks forward on the controller, if you're using teleop mode, it drives forward. Now, under the devices, you'll notice port one is empty. That's where a motor is. If you go back here, you'll notice ports six also has a motor in it, port 10 and port 11 also have motors in it. So 10 and 11 are blank here and six is blank here. Port 5 is completely empty. There is nothing in it. That's why it says no sensor and no motor. Okay. S port 9 is also empty, and port 12 is also empty. You can add other sensors. You can mo add multiple sensors. You can add more motors if you choose to, um, if your kid allows for it. But that's how you do your setup. Once you're there, you can go, okay, here. Now, if I want this to move, I'm going to tell you right up front, comments are going to be something you want to put in your programs. Because if you just save and you don't tell it a name, it's always going to start out as graphical 002RBG or 003 or 005, whatever. Okay. So the first thing I always do is I put a comment box here at my first point, and I'm going to tell it what it is. This is going to be my example code uh, for VEX IQ. Okay. So I'll put that in. Now, from there, I can put other things in. So first thing I want to do is I want to put a couple of statements in. Now, you'll start talking about statements in more detail depth later, but for right now, I'm going to start with some basics. I want to put a repeat forever statement in here, so I'm going to drop a repeat forever statement right there. What that means is whatever's inside this bracket right here, in other words, it'd actually be inside these braces if you took it out to uh, text mode, but whatever's inside there is something that the brain or the cortex is looking for forever, and as long as it's on, it's looking for it, as long as it's on and this program's running. So I'm going to start with that. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put my tank controls on. So my tank controls are going to go to channel D and channel A. On my controller, it looks like a game controller, uh, the two D 
D sticks are labeled one is channel A and one is channel D, forward and back. They, do not, they go side to side, but channels A and D are forward and back. And they are sensitive up to 10, so we're good there. Now, if I want to do anything else, I can add all these other things in it. Um, we're going to only start with the basics right now and let you work your way through some of this other stuff. So, let's start with a simple if statement. If statements can go right here. I'm going to drop it at line 4. Notice that's under this repeat forever. I can tell it right here what it's looking for, what input it's looking for. In this case, I'm going to use the wireless controller, and I'm going to go to channel, and yes, it's, it's going to be F down, which is actually my a button on my right-hand thumb. If that ever reads true or a 1, then it's going to do something. Well, what it's going to do? Well, here's where I get the program. So I can tell it to then move forward, however many rotations, or degrees, or milliseconds, or seconds, or minutes. I'm going to tell it to, in this case, I'm going to kind of take some defaults for a minute. I'm going to tell it to roll forward one rotation, one rotation forward. Then I will tell it to stop. So I'll come down here, and I'll tell it to stop all motors. Now, I usually use the stop all motors command simply because Unless I want other motors moving while I'm, literally while I'm moving forward, uh, there's no reason not to stop all motors. The problem with this is I know I've got at least two motors. I don't want to glitch. So I'm going to tell it to stop all motors. I can then tell it to make it like a right-hand turn right here. And I'm going to tell it to go degrees. I'm going to tell it to go, um, in all honesty, make this thing make a right-hand turn. That's going to turn 90 degrees. Sensor should pick that up. Um, I can add in a sensor input here if I want. Okay, joystick scale, etc. I put all this in, code it all out, and when I'm done, I will then tell it to save my program right here. I will tell it to compile the program, and then by hooking up my robot brain after my robot is assembled, and I power on my brain, hook it up with a USB cable to my computer that I'm working on, I can then tell it to download the program into the brain, and it'll save it as whatever this name is, and I can find it under my tele-op. Now, before I leave here and leave you with this, this is pretty simple. You can literally take this and stretch it out for as many statements as you want. You can put multiple if statements in here. Like if I put another if statement right there, I could change the value to, well, if my wireless controller goes to, like, left button down, and it's a positive, I can tell it to go immediately backward, however many rotations. Or I can say an if statement here, if, say, my bump sensor, so there's my bump switch right there, if it becomes true, or one, it's pretty much the same thing, I'm going to tell it to, one, stop all motors, and then number two, go forward. No, don't want to go forward if I bumped it, right? So I'm going to tell it to go backward. So these are things you can just you can just keep going. It's just a series of if statements and conditions you apply in here. Attach sensors, motors, switches, whatever. So when that's all done, it's ready to go. Now, before we leave, I do want to show you something. I can go up here and tell this thing to convert everything to a text file. For those that want to see the code, convert to a text file. So all that stuff we did with the motor and sensor setup is done up here. This is all the coding that we didn't actually have to write. Right down to about right there. All that was taken care of in the initial setup when we said, okay, we're using this robot. I didn't have to set any of those um, any of those conditions in my coding. I it took care of it for me. So that's one of the reasons I would strongly suggest we use that if you're gonna if you're not gonna get into coding deeply. So enjoy, have fun, and good luck.